interval of increasing and decreasing. Without graphing, determine the intervals of increasing and decreasing for the following functions. So we have four polynomial functions here on this sheet. y equals to x cube minus 6x square minus 4. y equals to minus x square plus 3x. c is y equals to 5 minus 3x. And then y equals to pi. So I like you to do these questions yourself. I'll do one of them and explain how to find interval of increasing and decreasing. Now when we say without graphing, then we are trying to tell you that find the derivatives and then get the answer. As you know, from derivatives, if I find the derivative and f dash x is my derivative, if the derivative is greater than zero, then we know that the function is increasing, right? And if the derivative is less than zero, then the function is decreasing. So that is the application of derivative which we are going to apply here. Now to find out the intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing, we basically try to find out which are the points at which f dash x is equals to zero or it is undefined or undefined. So these demarcate the intervals of increasing and decreasing, right? So let's say a function is increasing, for example, then and then increasing. Then at this point where it turns, the derivative will be zero or undefined. So we are trying to find this point. Once we find this point, then we test on either side of the point whether f dash x is positive or negative. If it is positive, that means greater than zero, the function is increasing. If it is negative, then it is decreasing, right? So that is the policy. Now let's try to find the derivative of all these functions and figure out intervals of increasing and decreasing. So I'll do the first one for you, which is y equals to x cubed minus 6x squared minus 4. So we have a function y equals to x cubed minus 6x squared minus 4. So what is y dash? y dash is 3x squared minus 12x. Now this you can factor, correct? So if you factor this, you get 3x times, you're left with x here minus 4, right? So you get y dash as 3x times x minus 4. Now this is 0, at which points? At x equals to 0 and at x equals to 4, correct? So here we find that our zeros are so let's write down zeros here. Zeros are at x equals to 0 and at 4. So these are the two zeros. Now let's try to analyze the points near these zeros, right? So what we will do is we'll draw our line. And let's say that is the line. And on which we have the zeros, one is at 0 itself and the other one is at 4, right? Now with these zeros, let me draw a dotted line here showing our work. It forms kind of a table, right? Now we are trying to test these intervals. The intervals are from minus infinity to 0, from 0 to 4, and from 4 to infinity. Now in these intervals, let's take our test points. The so test points could be minus 1. Here we could take 1 as a test point and 5 in 4 to infinity interval. And let's test y dash now. Now to test y dash, we can write factors. So first factor is 3x. So if I write 3x here, let me have a dot line here also. So we'll write factors on this side. So we have two factors. One is 3x, the other one is x minus 4. The other one is x minus 4, right? Now, if I plug in minus 1 here, what do I get? I get negative, right? So we are not really interested in the value, we are interested in the sign. So when I put minus 1, this becomes minus 3, negative sign. If I plug in 1, which is positive, I get positive 3, so I'm just writing sign here. And if I plug in 5, then I get plus 15, uh, and 
That is also a positive sign. So just write positive here. Now, in the next factor, which is x minus 4, if I plug in negative, I get negative, which is negative 5. If you want, you can write negative 5 also. And if I write 1 for x, then 1 minus 4 is negative 3, so I'll write negative, the sign. And 5 minus 4 is plus 1, so I'll write plus 1 here. Now, if I multiply these two, what do I get? Because these are factors, they get multiplied. F y dash is 3x times x minus 4. So when we multiply, we find that the derivative of the function becomes positive in this region and plus times minus is negative, plus times plus is positive, right? So we notice that in the interval minus infinity to 0, the function is increasing since it is positive. In the interval 0 to 4, it is negative derivative, so it is decreasing. And then again, it is increasing. Do you see? So from here, we get intervals of increasing and decreasing. And now we can write down our answer. And that is, for this particular function, interval of increasing or from minus infinity to 0 and then from 4 to infinity and intervals of decreasing are from 0 to 4. So that is our answer for this particular question. Now at times we are also interested in finding out maximum and minimum. Now you see, when the interval changes from increasing to decreasing, we get maximum. So we have a maximum at this point. And when the interval changes from decreasing to increasing, then we get a minimum. Right? So you can find the points of maximum and minimum also. This maximum occurs at x equals to 0 and minimum occurs at x equals to 4. So if you plug in 0 in your function, you get y equals to minus 4. So that is the maximum value. And if you plug in 4, so by substituting 4 here, you can calculate the minimum value of the function which occurs at 4, right? So that is an extension to this problem. So when you do solve for part B, C and D, then you should also write the points where the function is maximum and minimum. Right? And I hope now you also understand how to explain that the, ma that the function is maximum at a point or minimum at a point from this interpretation of increasing and decreasing. So what we note here is if, if f dash x, that means derivative, changes from positive to negative, then what is the possibility? There's the possibility of maximum, but you have to check, right? But if it is, then it may yield maximum. But if it changes from negative to positive, you may get minimum. I'm saying you may get. Reason for me saying you may get, because at times the function could be discontinuous at that point, right? And this, the function is continuous, so you have maximum or minimum at those points, correct? So that is also an extension to this, and I hope you get the concept. So major concept here is to find the intervals of increasing and decreases, and thereby this can be applied to even find your turning points or the points where you have maximum or minimum of the function, okay? Thank you.